Shalom. Today we're going to do the rest of Psalm 91. Read and learn. There'll be time for you to repeat the phrases and each piece will be broken down grammatically. And also we're going to give some keywords and some helps for you to remember your vocabulary. Mizmor Tzadi Aleph. Ki ata Yehova machsi elyon samta meonecha. He is a conjunction, usually translated as because. Ata is the masculine singular you. Yudhevavhe, the name of God. Machsi, we have already discussed previously in verse 2. My refuge. Elion, we also discussed, comes from the preposition al, which means on. Elion is the most high. Samta is from the verb lasim, to put. It is conjugated for the second person, singular masculine, you put. Ma'on is a dwelling place. The cha at the end is the possessive pronoun for you, masculine singular. Because you have made Yehovah my refuge, the most high, you set it as your dwelling place. Ki ata Yehovah machsi elion samta me'onecha. Lo te une elecha raa venega lo yikrav baoha lecha. Lo is the, the negative particle. Te'une comes from a verb, ana. It is in a passive form. It means that something happens. It's in the female third person imperfect. We'll see why in a minute. Elecha is the preposition el, to, with the personal pronoun, you, masculine singular. Ra'a means evil or bad. This is the feminine that is governing the te'une. The vav is and, nega is a plague, lo is the negative particle, yikrav is a verb which means to approach. You can remember this from the word korban, which is actually spelled with c in many places. It appears in the New Testament in Mark 7:11, where Yeshua tells the people, if someone says to his father or mother, this gift that might go to you, instead of that is korban, something that <clears throat> the donor has determined is consecrated to the temple. They're taking something that they could use to benefit their parents, and instead he said, he's saying, this is korban, I've given this over to the temple. So it appears actually korban in the Greek manuscript coming directly from the Hebrew. The whole concept of sacrifices, which this verb is associated with frequently, is that your sacrifice brings you near to God. So we have this form, yikrav, it will come near to you. In this case, a negative, it will not come near to you. Ba is the preposition in. Ohel is tent. The cha at the end is personal pronoun, your, masculine singular. It will not befall to you, evil, and a plague will not come near your tent. Lo te une elecha ra'a, venega lo yikrav ba'ohelecha. Ki malachav yitzavelach l'shmorcha b'chol drachecha. Ki is a conjunction. 
because, in this case, maybe for. A malach is traditionally translated as an angel. It can also just be a messenger. The ending is for possessive pronoun his, his angels or his messengers. You can remember this word from the name of the prophet, Malachi. His name means my messenger, Malachi. Yitzaveh is a verb, he will command. You can remember this from the noun you know, mitzvah. The bar mitzvah is the son of the mitzvah, the commandment. Lach, you. Lishmorcha, this is an infinitive form. Lishmor, to guard. The lamed indicates the infinitive. Cha is a personal pronoun at the end, you. Bechol, in, all. Derachecha, a derach is a way or a road. Here the form indicates plural and the possessive pronoun, your. You can learn more about the word derach. I'll put the link in the description notes. For his angels, he will command to you or concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Ki malacha vitzavelach lishmorcha bechol drachecha al kapayim yisauncha pen tigof ba'evin. Raglecha. All is a preposition on. Kapayim comes from kaf, which is the palm of the hand. It's in the dual form for dual body parts. We have a special ending ayim, kapayim. Yisa un cha. The verb is nasa, to lift up. It's a drop letter imperfect. The cha at the end is for you. Pen is usually translated as lest. Tigof is from the verb nagav, to hit or to strike. The tof prefix is for you. Ba'avin, ba'evin, preposition ba, here maybe with, evin is a stone. Raglecha, regel is a foot. Cha is your singular masculine. On hands, their hands, they will lift you up lest you strike on a stone your foot. Al kapayim yisauncha pentigof ba'evin raglecha. Al shachel vafeten tidroch tirmos kfir betanin. All is the preposition on. Shachel is not so common word for lion. The vav is and. Feten is translated as some kind of snake. You can remember this because it's cognate with the English word python. Tidroch, so we just had the noun derech, and this is the verb that comes from that noun, to walk on, to walk on the way, to step on. It's conjugated for the second person, masculine singular, you will. Tirmos, also conjugated for the second person, masculine, you will, trod underfoot. Kafir is translated as a young lion, and there is a word study for related words that I will include in the description. The V is and, and tanin is translated as large reptilian animal, either a serpent or a crocodile. On the lion and the python, you will step. You will trot underfoot the young lion and the serpent. Al-shachal vafetin 
tidroch tir mos kvir vitanin. Ki vi chasha va'afaltehu asagvehu ki yada shmi. Again, ki because this V is the preposition in and the personal pronoun me, in me. Rashak means to set your love on somebody. The Vav here is and. The Aleph is the future I will. The who at the end is a personal pronoun him. So we find the root is pe la mitet, which means to escape, in this case, to set free. It's in the PL Binyan. We find the same form, asagvehu, I will. This root means to set on high in a safe place. The who is him. Ki, because. Yada, he knows. Shmi, Shem, name. And the personal pronoun, my, my name. Because on me, he has set his love. And I will set him free. I will deliver him. I will set him on high in a defensive position because he knows my name. Ki vi chashak va'afaltehu asagvehu ki yada shmi. Yikra'eni ve'e'enehu, imo anochi v'tzara, achaltsehu ve'achabdehu. Nikraeni, the prefix yud, he will. The ni at the end is me. Kara means to call out. The vav is and. The aleph is I will. The hu at the end is him. The verb root is one to answer. Imo is the preposition im, which means with. The vav at the end is him. This is not used so much in modern Hebrew. They tend to use the other preposition that means with, which is aleph tav. Ito. Anochi means I. There are two words for I, ani and anochi, and they are used interchangeably. The bet is in, sara is trouble, it has to do with a tight place. The aleph is I will, the who at the end is him. The verb chalat has to do with, uh, also with setting free, to deliver. There is a ceremony for a man who is obligated to marry his brother's widow, and he doesn't want to do that. And so the ceremony involves the widow removing the man's shoe, and he has to walk home barefoot. Now, this ceremony actually is shown in the book of Ruth, but it doesn't use this word chalatz. But in Deuteronomy 25, it does use the word chalatz. There is a word which does not appear actually in Tanakh, but it appears in the Talmud. Chalitza is the name of that ceremony. So it has to do with releasing the man, his shoe, and the man from the marriage obligation. Another word that we see coming from this root is chalutz, if you ever heard about the pioneers that went and established the state of Israel. They went early before the state was established. They were called pioneers, chalutzim. And they are in the sense that they are released from their normal position and they are released to go forward and fight. And the same formation, va'achabdehu, the vav is end, the aleph is I will, the who at the end is him, 
and the root is kavod, to give honor. He will call me, and I will answer him. With him I will be in trouble. I will set him free, I will deliver him, and I will esteem him, and I will honor him. Yikra'eni ve'e'enehu imo anochi v'tzara achaltsehu v'achabdehu. Orech yamim asbiehu ve'arehu bishuati. Orech is the length, yamim is days, and we already had this phrase in Psalm 23.6. Vishafti bebet Yehovah le orachemim, and I will dwell in the house of Yehovah for the length of days. Again, the Aleph prefix I will, the who at the end him, the root here, sin bet ayin, means to be satisfied, to be full. It's in the he feel, the yud tells you it's in the he feel. Again, vav and, the Aleph is I will, who is him, and we have the verb to show. It's not to see. It's in the he feel, it's in the causative, I will cause him to see. It's a little difficult to see in these verbs with weak letters. I will show him, I will cause him to see. The bet is the preposition. The verb requires a preposition. It doesn't require a preposition in English, but it does in Hebrew. The T at the end is mine. Yeshua, you know, the name of Yeshua means salvation. With length of days, I will satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. Orech yamim asbiehu ve'arehu bishuati.